talking about ambulances reminds us of what he has been pursuing, particularly quite candy. That is the matter involving the 307 ambulances. Honorable, the last time we spoke to you, we were talking about a spare pass deal. Now you've gone to the procurement of the ambulances themselves. Where was the link? Because we thought we were pursuing some auto service Ghana, Limi, uh, Ghana Auto Service Limited. Then now it's now about the who who brought the ambulances in. Yes. Good morning, Sana. Good morning to all the distinguished listeners of Radio Gold. You are right, and you will recall that when we discussed the thirty-four point nine million dollar spare pass scandal, I dropped a hint on your station that uh, as this scandal evolves, uh, you will be shocked to discover those behind it and how deep the scandal is. I often like to uh, serialize these scandals and to separate the issues so that they don't get mixed up. Uh, and this approach has always helped to also expose the bad guys because the criminals who engage in these matters, they always hope that you do not have the full picture. You don't have all the evidence. You don't have all sides to the puzzle so that they will get away with their crimes against the Ghanaian people. So it is always good to just uh, bait and uh, put the evidence out in bits and see how they react, what they try to do, so that you can really um, expose them fully in the national interest. Remember that what we are doing is about parliamentary oversight. The whole essence of having three arms of government is for checks and balances to be effective so that whatever the executive does, the legislature uh, will be able to conduct scrutiny and keep an eagle eye so that you do not allow those in the executive who are the spending officers, if you like, to totally dissipate our resources. So you are right that this started as a $34.9 million spare pass deal. And the Honorable Ken a few days before leaving office, instructed that $10 million out of that, first of all, he approved the $34.9 million, wrote to the Minister for Health on the 9th of February that this is approved, he will take care of $10 million and the balance should be paid for um, by the National Health Insurance Authority. Then he wrote another letter that same day. He was very busy on the 9th of February on this deal. He instructed the contract accountant general to release $10 million. The evidence I have put out confirms that on the 23rd of February this year, the $10 million, which at the time, using the Bank of Ghana exchange rate, it amounted to 120.7 billion Ghana cities, a staggering amount. So that has been released. Service Ghana Auto Group Limited has received the money. And that was the first part of the scandal. The second part of the scandal has been an unmasking of all the powerful people behind the deal. It is now clear that this is a deal high up. The president's daughters, Jankroma Akufuado, Edwina Akufuado, and indeed, the lead actor in this is their business partner and somebody who uh, they have really um, uh, made a baby with uh, John Krumer's, uh, uh baby daddy. And so when we talk about politically exposed persons, when we talk about how this is an insider dealing, this is a sweetheart deal, 
the evidence is now there for all to see. In part two, where I unmarked the powerful people, I revealed that Jan Kroma and Stephen Okoro have been long time partners, long time allies, long time business partners. Apart from uh, what they do or may have done as lovers, they also are business partners. They registered in 2013 a, co a company known as SFO Initiatives Limited. And when they are uh, a father-in-law or their father became president, depending on who you are talking about, they decided to even register more companies. So they registered Good Box Limited on the 12th of August, 2020. Uh, they said that they will be setting up gyms. Kelly Gajepo, who is an appointee of President Akufuado, Clearly, their godfather, who is supervising, giving them business ideas, is, is, a, is a shareholder in Good Box. And they say they are establishing gyms. And so you see Stephen Okoro there, you see Jankroma Akufuado, you see Edwina Akufuado. Then they didn't stop there. Eight days later, they opened another company called Good Grow, Good Grow Limited. And Good Grow is uh, going into what you will call the ganja business. You recall that President Akufuado uh, sent amendments to our uh, drugs laws to Parliament, uh, which was approved um, uh, by the Seventh Parliament, where they had a majority. And uh, uh, they said that it is time for us to use uh, marijuana for uh, pharmaceutical and industrial purposes. Okay. Interestingly, a few days after the approval, uh, his daughters and their uh, partner set up this company, and they say that they are going into cannabis farming. Uh, so that is Good Grow Limited. So in part two, I did unmask the powerful people, and you can now understand why this company was treated so special, this service, Ghana Auto Group Limited. How, according to the Auditor General, even before the company was formed, they were giving the ambulances to service, and they were being paid eight months even before a contract was signed. You see how promptly every month they are paid, and before the $34.9 million scandal, they had been paid 115 million Ghana cities. So this is a company that receives preferential treatment, a company which uh, is above the laws of Ghana. Uh, there is no respect for the procurement law. There is no respect for our Companies Act. There is absolutely no respect for the constitution of Ghana because all these payments they are receiving have not even been approved by parliament. So you now get it. You can now understand why the directors of this company receive such preferential treatment, such, you know, uh, special class treatment. Now, in part three of this scandal, uh, which uh, has even shocked the country the more, we have now exposed how these same guys Apparently, they do not only import spare parts, they do not only have a, 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 a service agreement, a maintenance agreement, as the health ministry sought to portray when they reacted to this expose, saying that um, Service Ghana is all about uh, servicing the ambulances, and they are committed to uh, making sure that these ambulances are serviced. It has now emerged that the directors of Service Ghana Auto Group Limited are the same guys who imported the ambulances. They were told to set up different companies. And if you have paid regard to the expose that I put out, six out of the eight companies were all hurriedly established hurriedly between 
between uh, April and September 2019. All of all of them, all six companies between April and September 2019. Hurriedly, April together. September 2019. Yes, hurriedly. So the same directors, same directors, and of course Stephen Okoro is in there, uh, the darling uh, baby daddy. And this time he decided to bring on board his brother. But because they didn't want to make it very obvious, um, he, he uh, used his, uh, his other name, that is Solomon Okereke, that I'm talking about uh, Stephen Okoro's brother. But we have been able to dig deeper. We have obtained his travel documents, his IDs, his passport. And we have discovered that this is the same guy who is brother to Stephen Okoro, direct brother, one father, one mother. Indeed, he is Solomon Okoro Okereke. So the attempt to conceal Okoro and create the impression as if this is not you know, an insider, in-laws and their brother-in-laws who are setting up this company has been exposed. We now know for a fact that is all a family affair, the presidential in-laws and their brothers setting up this company, which they call ELOC, ELOC Consult and Services Limited. They clearly are all in on the deal. When we talk about insider dealing, when we talk about conflict of interest, it doesn't get murkier than this. Now, what is really frightening is that the levels of inflation is shocking. I haven't seen anything like that in my life. I have never seen anything like that in my life. Inflation? Look, if, yes, the, how they inflated the prices. The padding. I'm talking about padding of the cost of the ambulance. Okay. In some cases, they doubled, sometimes tripled the cost. So, if you read the Auditor General's report carefully, government officials told the Auditor General that they spent $54 million importing these 370 ambulances. By the way, my checks so far indicate that even this 307 is a suspicious figure. So far, my tracking of the system, I have only seen 275 ambulances. I'm still digging deeper, so I'm not sure at this point that they really brought in 307 ambulances. Okay. The evidence is not supporting that, but I, I will soon get the final confirmation on that. And uh, as I always do on Radio Gold, I always give you people hints about uh, uh, what, what to expect next. Okay. Now, now, if you look at the costing, which I'm talking about, the Auditor General was told at page two of the 2022 audit, the performance audit of the National Ambulance Service, that $54 million has been spent on importing these ambulances. However, when you go to page 24, paragraph 46 of the Auditor General's report, which is available online, listeners of Radio Good can download that Auditor General's report. It's, it's, it's going to be the most damning audit report you will read in a lifetime. This is a company we clearly should have been blacklisted, not be given another $34.9 million contract. But when you go to page 24, paragraph 46, they told the Auditor General that a unit cost of the ambulance is $80,000. So $80,000 times 307 you let me be generous and go with your figure of 307. You will not get anything above $24.5 million. And yet, Ghana paid $54 million. So it, the, the ambulances that we got, this even if the, the, the 307 is something you want to go with, it means we could have gotten more than 650 ambulances. We could have gotten more than twice the number of ambulances that we received. Can you believe that? Now, last night, 
I have done further analysis to reveal the levels of, of pardon, the levels of uh, what we call in local parlance, chobo, chobo. Okay. This is the only deal hmm, where the chobo amount, the chobo, is more than the actual cost. Can you believe that? The chobo, the chobo is more than... The chobo, the chobo is more than the actual cost. I mean, growing up, what we always said about chobo is, oh, you know, the thing costs 20 cities, then you say it's 22 or 25. You know, you understand. Mm. You know, that's what we knew about, you know, uh, chobonomics. But under Akufuado and what his daughters and their business partners and baby daddies are doing, chobo has been taken to a different level where Chobo is now more than the actual cost. Chobo can be, the Chobo they put on the, on, the, on the bill is actually sometimes twice, three times more than the actual value. Can you believe that? Really? We, we, yes. We have to find another name. This, this, this is crazier than Chobo. Crazier. I mean, this, this Chobo has never looked like this. You know, so if you do the analysis, mm -hmm. I have obtained from the give me system, and uh, you know every government payment must go through give me. Give me is the Ghana Integrated Financial Management Information System. So every payment that the government makes, once you pay, it is uploaded onto that system. Mm -hmm. We have been able to get access to the system. And so what we are talking about uh, is incontrovertible, is irrefutable, is unimpeachable, is impeccable. You cannot question uh, the evidence that we have. Now, if you look at the payments that they are anchor, and you see this nepotistic government, so president's daughters, the finance minister who is making the payment is their uncle, you know, who is looking out for his nieces, he wants to take care of his nieces, make his nieces happy, and his nieces, partners. I mean, it's, it's bizarre to think that this is a man who promised this country that he would never run a family and friends government. He said it time without number, even before the clergy said it in church, you know, uh, invoke God and all of that. And, and this is what he has done to us. So let me come back to the gift miss analysis. A company called RDC Company Limited. So what you observe, let me just give this preamble, is that even though all those who bought the ambulances are friends of the Akufuado daughters, you can tell from the payments they received that uh, some are more friends than the others. Uh, last night, uh, uh, a very patriotic Ghanaian put it even better that um, it looks like when they were all invited to the tournament, some were at the VIP stand and some were at the popular stand. You know, so even though they are all cronies, you understand, Senna, uh, some are more special than the others. Mm. So those that are not special, like uh, are not very special, mm, even though they were all invited to the party to loot, RDC Company Limited for supplying 50 ambulances was paid 17 million Ghana cities okay. on the 27th of December 2019. And what is interesting, mm, this doesn't normally happen in, uh, in, in government financing. Can you believe that all of these companies they were all paid the same week between 24th and 27th December, 2019. Can you believe that? 24th to 27th December. Yes. Everybody got yes. their money. Everybody. It was supposed to be a Christmas bonanza. Yeah. The 2019 Christmas was very good for some people. All of them, same week. Christmas bonanza. This doesn't, this hardly happens in government financing. You know, you claim they are different companies, they are not linked, and, uh, and yet, some way, somehow, they all submit their claims the same day, and they are all paid the same period. Really interesting. So, RDC Company Limited paid 17 million for supplying 40 ambulances. 
when you do the exchange rate conversion at the time, we have looked at the Bank of Ghana exchange rate in December 2019. That is what government uses. Government uses not the forest bill rate, which was uh, uh, $1 to uh, 5.5 Ghana cities. That was the exchange rate in uh, around the 24th to 27th December 2019. You discover that RDC billed Ghana $77,034. So let's say $77,000 per ambulance. $77,000. Then another company called Blue Mix, Blue Mix Company Limited. They were also paid 24th December and they received 15.9 million Ghana cities. You do the exchange rate conversion, it means that they billed us $82,000 per ambulance. Different so that specs. is quite, quite reasonable. Mm. Now, will you believe that? No, before you continue, are there different specs in terms of the ambulances? Brilliant question, brilliant question. Same specs, same specs. I have checked all the documents. The documents Ken Ufriata signed, what was uploaded on the gift list, is the same specs. It is the, the, it is the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter okay. 316 CDI ambulance vehicles, the 2019 model, same specs. Okay. Same, same specs. So. Very, very brilliant question. Thank you for asking this question. So you see another company called Quality Supplies and Builders Company Limited. It's only in Ghana that companies that are reg registered as uh, building construction companies suddenly are able to supply ambulances. Ambulances that must have medical supplies, medical warranties, and all of that. I mean, and to think that the government of Ghana could not even directly deal with because National Ambulance Service, Ghana Health Service, you could have dealt directly with even the manufacturers. And we will have avoided all of this chopo and all of this, you know, uh, extreme, unconscionable profiteering that these uh, business people who are associates of the president's daughters have engaged in. But this is what our government decided to do. So you have here quality supplies and builders company limited. Builders. Uh, suddenly, they are not building houses, they are building ambulances. They, if you look at their payment, 26.6 million, you do the conversion, they supply this for $120,000 per ambulance. Can you believe that? 120000 When others are supplying this at 77, at 82, they added more than $40,000. That, that but, close but to 50,000. You haven't had the worst. So, Stephen Okoro's company, hmm? Stephen Okoro and his brother Solomon Okoro, Okereke, they are ELOC. Okay. They, they were paid the highest, over $145,000. Actually, $145,353.34 per ambulance. So, for the Okoros, who were at the VIP stand mm, at the stadium. It looks like as of them, when they arrive, they ask, please, how much do you want us to pay you? Mm -hmm. It was not about value for money. It, it was not about the cost, the actual cost of the ambulances. So can you believe that? So for the Okoros, who are, uh, as we all now know, in-laws of the president, they were made to charge us more than twice the actual value of these ambulances. Can you believe that? And to think that people who have made such a killing, hmm, such a killing, over $54 million are now back because of greed. They haven't had enough. And because they thought that they have gotten away with this, they are back with a spare pass deal. Of 34.9 million dollars and when you think about it now you can, we can all put things into proper perspective what this scandal means is that the cost of these ambulances which is to be generous 80,000 even though a company like RTC supplied yes and they were happy to receive 77,000 dollars but let's say 
as they told the auditor general, is eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars with your profit and everything. Eighty thousand dollars. We are going to pay these same guys to supply spare parts valued at over one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. I mean, this is the only country in the world. Look, we must enter the Guinness Book of Records quickly, where the cost of spare parts is more, far more than the actual value. So the ambulance is $80,000. Spare parts is $113,000. Mm -hmm. More than $33,000 more than the market value of these spare parts. So look, what these presidential family, mm, these presidential in-laws have done to us is so criminal, it is so atrocious, and they must not be allowed to get away with this. That is why I can confirm to you this morning, to all the listeners of Radio Gold, that the Office of Special Prosecutor, they have communicated to me again, you know, the first time they only acknowledged the petition. Okay. They have sent a second communication saying that they have now decided to formally open investigations okay. because our petition, clearly my lawyers did a great job. Uh, they situated the petition within the mandate of the Office of the Special Prosecutor under Ghanaian law. And so they have commenced investigations. Uh, yesterday, a crack team of investigators engaged me for over two hours uh, asking for more evidence, more documents, which I have duly submitted. And uh, I'm quite impressed with the seriousness with which the Office of the Special Prosecutor is handling this investigation. And, and I'll come back to that, because there's something, you're saying that in one instance, the same ambulance which somebody was ready to charge $77,000 for. Not ready. Actually, actually charged us presented a bill for 77000 and was paid, RDC company. And they were very happy, very, very happy to receive 77. They themselves brought that. We, we didn't have to bargain with them. We didn't negotiate. We didn't do uh, deji, deji. Hello, uh, uh, what, uh, how do we say it in Akanti? So we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. It was their bill. And they were very happy. They have added their profit, everything. $77,000, and they were smiling all the way to the bank. That same ambulance, same specs. The Okoros bring it. Mm -hmm. The darling Okoros, the people who gave President Akufuado his first granddaughter, they bring this, and we are paying them over $145,000. Can you believe that? You said these are figures you got from the Give Me system. Oh, yes. And I have attached, in the latest expose, I have attached all the invoices, all the payment vouchers. I have them. I have given copies to the OSP. So I'm not making this up. It's not a figment of my imagination. And you know how uh, we've been doing this work <laughs> for, for years now. Because we, you know the people you are dealing with. Um, these are unscrupulous elements in government. If you don't have your evidence, they'll quickly put out a denial. Have you noticed how silent they have been on this expose? Mm -hmm. the, the presidency is pretending that they, they haven't had it. And the Ministry of Health issues that porous, useless statement. You know, I'm glad that they'll be appearing before uh, our committee, the Assurances Committee today, and they should get ready. Oh, they appear before the committee today. Definitely. On this Definitely. matter? On other matters, but expect that this matter will also uh, be raised uh, because it's, it's a matter of enormous public interest and uh, we, we cannot allow these uh, shenanigans to continue. And uh, when they issue those statements, which are most dishonest, I mean, statements that do not speak to the fundamental issues, all the procurement breaches, the conflict of interest, the insider dealing. Why are you awarding contracts to companies that don't exist, paying people when they don't have a contract? Mm -hmm. I mean, major issues that border on criminality. They don't speak to it. Then they distort, they set their own questions and say, we haven't paid all the 34.9. Who said that you have paid all the 
who has said that? I have been clear from day one about this scandal that the value of the contract is $34.9 million. Ken Oforiata instructed that $10 million should be paid. And, and in any case, why are you even proud? You are not ashamed that you have a $34.9 million spare pass deal. You, you, you are not ashamed. You should, be, you should be exhibiting remorse and saying that, oh, please, Daniels, now that you have caught us, you've caught us pants down. We are canceling this contract immediately. We are withdrawing from this unconscionable, obnoxious transaction. You are telling us that uh, you haven't paid all. Should you even have come up with this idea? Should you even have paid $10 million out of the 34.9? That is why, look, I am so, so happy that the OSB is acting promptly. Uh, my main aim is to stop the balance. As for that $24.9 million, everything that we will do, no matter where we have to go to, and you know, you, you know me, Sena, you know what we can do. If we have to mobilize onto the streets again, storm the Jubilee House, storm the Finance Ministry, if we get any hint that they have signed a $24.9 million check again, like they did in the case of the $10 million, <laughs> they will have no peace. So the $10 million, we will retrieve it at the right time. But as for the 24.9, it will not be paid. Look, look at the problems in the health sector. Are you aware that Confanochi is turning away dialysis patients because they don't have equipment? Look at the number of people who died at Kolebu because we didn't have dialysis consumables. 19 Ghanaians died. Not too long ago, the health minister told us that the whole Ghana, all our public health facilities, we have only four, four MRI machines. One, two, three, four. Only four. There are many regions in this country without MRIs, including my own region. If you get a terrible accident in the Volta region and you are bleeding in your brain, God save you. That is the state of our collapsed healthcare system. And because of this lack of equipment, doctors and nurses are living in droves, droves, abandoning the workspace. And this is what we are doing with our money. This is what we are doing. Hmm? If you put this, so far, these guys, if you add the $54 million, to the $34.9 million per pass, and you also add the 150 million cities. Senna, guess what? It all comes to $108 million. So they were chasing a two forcing Jakba and Co for just 2.3 million euros. Mm -hmm. Even they, they supplied the ambulances and they refused to receive them, to take them. 2.3 million. And whilst they are doing that, their daughters, their daughters' boyfriends and business partners have saddled us with a $108 million obligation. Can you imagine that? Even what is on top of the $100 million is more than the 2.3 they are chasing at 2.474. Can you believe that? Do these people have any conscience at all? Do they have any conscience? $108 million, that is why I insist that the real ambulance prosecution, hmm? not persecution, the real ambulance prosecution is going to happen in 2025. It's not this one, it's not this joke, this child's play that happened this year and last year. Hmm? The real ambulance one, the one that will be a blockbuster movie from ghost companies, inflated payments, conflict of interest. I mean, the real crimes against the Ghanaian people when it comes to ambulance dubious deals is this one. $108 million. That is what they were going to pocket. And I am glad that the good Lord always reveals these things to us and the good Lord uses us to save the Ghanaian people to protect the Ghanaian people. But for all of what they have looted already out of this $108 million, they should get ready. Judgment day is coming. The day of reckoning, the day of accountability is coming. 
We're looking forward to your meeting with the uh, health, min uh, 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 of course, the ministry today. And um, thank you very much for swinging to us this morning. Always welcome, sir. Mm. God bless. When I was some could you talk about Black Lives Matter Parliament for uh, not Tong? He's now on the Assurances Committee. Uh, he was speaking to us on this latest expose, especially the part where he's talking about how, if you're looking to buy something, you look for the best price to buy it. In this instance, our government was ready to pay 77000 in some instances, uh, $77,000, and as high as $145,000 in other instances. If somebody is ready to give you 77000 I want to give the person the whole contract so you know that I'm paying 77000 for the for all the ambulances, no, 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 no. They pay somebody seventy-seven thousand dollars, and they're ready to pay somebody twice the same for the same ambulance, the same specs. Honorable Kujia Tablaqo has also suggested that, um, and it's just possible that the three hundred seven we do not have three hundred and seven ambulances. That what we have is two seventy-five. Question is how come they made payment for? 307 ambulances. He said he's still cross checking that will confirm when his checks, he, he finalizes his checks. That is just possible that even the numbers have been inflated. So we'll keep following that one and give you more details.